Hi, this is Robert McCune. This is AEP 800 Module 5, Barriers to Web 2.0. Um, the article summaries, the first article on the barriers to Web, web 2.0 in the 21st century, um, I thought there was a lot of interesting facts and figures um, thrown out in there. Um, the thing that stood out to me was access to technology has increased, but it has not translated into the classroom. Um, and I couldn't agree more. Um, one other thing I found in there that was interesting, the articles seem to be from 2012 and in our society right now, technology moves so fast. Um, thinking back to five years ago, teaching wise, um, a lot of things have changed as well. And so even to me, that article is still outdated, although the, the message that I took from it um, still carries on. The seven common barriers that obstruct tech adoption in education. Um, the big thing that I took was lack of vision, because I think that um, really spoke to me, um, <clears throat> and especially in our school. If you have a lack of vision um, with regards to technology, if you don't know technology, you're not going to have a vision of technology. Um, I know when we were given kind of uh, student MacBooks and student computers um, about seven years ago, they were just kind of given to them. They, we weren't instructed anything to do with that, and it's kind of they slowly be playing catch up with that. But if you have a lack of vision in place before you do that, um, I think that would be much easier to accomplish. Uh, the digital divide, <clears throat> a quarter of the nation is without broadband. I found this very interesting um, because living in a, a big city, <clears throat> you don't really think about kind of things like that, uh, like what's happening uh, in the old Rust Belt. Um, I think eventually internet, and what I take, take away from that is internet, internet is a utility and should be treated as such um, because it is commonplace. People need it. People need it for work. People need it for communication purposes. Um, I know I don't have TV. Everything I do is through Roku, um, and so you need internet for that that takes the place of cable. Um, open Educational Resources Movement Scales Up article. Um, I found this very interesting because <clears throat> as a teacher, I'm always looking for things online. Um, I applaud their efforts and collaboration, looking at the Washington, D.C. school district, <clears throat> excuse me, and then working with uh, folks out in Colorado uh, to continually improve. And I think that's a big, important factor. As an IB teacher, um, I know I'm always collaborating, working with uh, teachers in other states and actually in even other parts of the country working on how best to teach a certain subject in preparation for a test. Um, do you feel the digital divide can be resolved? Why or why not? Um, <clears throat> kind of had two sides on this. The optimist part of me said, yes, absolutely. Uh, it'll be eventually treated like a utility and regulated. Um, and because of that, um, people will have more access to it, uh, which will help um, lower that digital divide. Uh, new technologies will make it cheaper and more efficient, and I really, truly believe that. Um, things change constantly, um, and it's a significant increase in the last several years. Um, just my students, um, more and more students have uh, access to uh, home Wi-Fi um, where they can get online and do schoolwork or ask questions, which I think is a very big, uh, big thing. Um, and then new generations have grown with it. Um, I think it's important that kids who grew up with internet are going to want internet throughout their whole life. And that just carries on the older they get. Um, and that's happened more and more and more. And as the older generations of no internet go away, um, these new generations are going to, everyone's going to want to have it and want to need it uh, to get their jobs or for their jobs or for other aspects. The pes pessimistic person in me says, no, um, it takes too long to fix things. Um, that it will be, there's still, you'll still have people who feel the internet is a choice and shouldn't be, um, shouldn't be demanded of them to have it. And it costs money. Um, it would be nice if the government paid for everything, but then that raises taxes and you get into a whole political argument on that. Um, and so I can just see money being a very big issue um, and kind of lowering that digital divide. Uh, what skill sets? Uh, do I feel that 21st century students must acquire prior to graduation? I think, and I've read a lot of things that soft skills um, 
are really kind of the people skills, the being able to communicate, being able to go up and have a conversation with someone um, are really being looked at because companies can train you specifics on stuff. But if you have all those soft skills there, um, you're more amenable to learning. Um, also, I think problem solving skills, flexibility, being innovative, um, and then having a digital skill set um, going into all that. Um, just only helps you and hopefully um, throughout your schooling, whether it's in fifth grade, seventh grade, or 11th grade, um, you're learning some of these different uh, skills. And I think one of the things we don't teach enough in school is those soft skills, is being able to communicate and have a conversation with someone. Uh, what impact has the global economy had on my personal use of the internet? Um, I think it's access to information. Um, Sometimes I and other people get, there's too much news. It's, there's too much happening all at the same time. Um, and you can only keep up with so much and that's the 24 seven news cycle. Um, but because the internet has uh, broken down kind of distance barriers um, and time barriers, you have that access to information, which is a good thing. Uh, social media, um, for all its bad things, it also helps to build relationships with people um, Facebook, Twitter, um, Snapchat, all of them help you maybe reconnect with people, um, or connect with someone and that could lead to a potential job or some, somehow network with some people, uh, shopping, um, the global economy has increased Amazon, um, anything online. I think I rarely go to a store and buy anything. Everything is all bought online. Um, and then resources for, Kind of in the classroom, um, looking at pri finding primary documents, there's everything online now. Uh, if you can't find it, you're not looking hard enough. Um, what technology training do you still need to effectively integrate technology in your, in your current position? I feel like I use technology quite a bit um, through our Canvas program, through um, different programs that we use. Um, I try not to be so dependent on it um, and just incorporate little bits and pieces of it. Student presentations obviously go through uh, some technological aspects. Um, but I think that other training that could help is um, new technology that becomes available. I think it would be helpful to be continually trained on that. Uh, looking at different teaching styles, looking at examples of like a flipped classroom. Um, I've tried that before, but it's it can't help uh, continuing to learn from others. Uh, communication tools to reach all stakeholders. I think that's one of the biggest things we still have to grapple with is how do we communicate our message um, to parents, to students, um, and getting that message out there. And then personally, um, I think I'd love the multiple choice grading apps make life so much easier. If they could find some way to do an essay grading app, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, is my school or district equipped with 21st century technology? Absolutely. Uh, we're a one-to-one -one district. Um, our K through eight have uh, iPads. I think after um, the fifth grade, they get to take those iPads home with them, not just at school, not just leave them at school. And then at the high school level, they all get uh, MacBooks. They they get to students get to take home. Um, every school is uh, Wi-Fi enabled. Um, next year, uh, I know in our building that's getting redone. We're getting uh, all kind of 75 inch Apple TVs. Um, our district and our school have, uh, has a large social media presence. Um, so that's kind of adapting and equipping with 21st century technology. One thing I think they could do better with um, that would open access and is, is have an open access um, of their Wi-Fi to the community. That would really get the community involved, I think a little more. Um, especially for those people who don't have Wi-Fi yet, um, can go to the school or at least hang out around the school and use that Wi-Fi. And But I also understand kind of some safety issues and some uh, other aspects with that. Mm -hmm. um, what are the advantages of innovative practices in schools? Um, I think some advantages are you building problem solving skills. Um, you're teaching students to think, um, which I think is very, very important. Um, you're developing an innovative mindset. Um, you are talking about student engagement. Um, if you stand up there and obviously in lecture and um, students aren't going to pay attention, but if you make it interactive, 
um, and you make them think and you challenge them, um, students are going to be engaged. Um, you're also preparing them for success outside of school. Um, you're giving them and helping them develop a skill set that they can use, um, whether if they go to college or if they go straight into the workforce, they have skills uh, that can translate into success for them. Time management. Um, I think it is, uh, instead of going maybe to the library, you're sitting at home um, and you're working on material, you can just shoot an email to the teacher and get your question asked right away. You can look online for students um, and you can, for as a teacher, you can uh, use those grading apps uh, mm. to help time, uh, help your time management and to help uh, get things through quicker. Um, and then it also gives you the ability to work outside the classroom. Um, as I said earlier, you can email teachers, you can work on, we have our site, which is Canvas, all my notes and anything are on Canvas. So it allows students, if they're gone or if they're leaving early for a sport, to be able to go home, uh, look at the notes and stay caught up um, and potentially ask any questions on that. Hmm. Uh, what disadvantages do I see? Um, big disadvantages, distractions. Um, having a computer in your hand, um, students will find a way to get around everything. Um, and so you have um, students will get around uh, firewalls um, to, they'll play games, they'll look at anything um, as a distraction. Um, and teachers need to be staying on top of students from that and teach them the correct and proper use of technology. Um, another disadvantage is lazy educators are too reliant. Um, I've seen this before. Um, teachers will just show videos um, and of people teaching the material rather than themselves teaching the material. Uh, with technology, you can have uh, less personal interaction with the students, which I think is important to get that, to build those relationships with students. Cyberbullying is a disadvantage. Um, safety is an issue. Um, if students aren't taught correct ways to use technology um, and money, technology is expensive. Um, and students that have money have better technology. Students that don't generally do not. Um, have I experienced problems with cyberbullying or other inappropriate internet use with students? Um, absolutely. Um, as mentioned in the last slide, inappropriate use occurs frequently. Students have, have proxies around firewalls. They watch Netflix. They um, download games. Uh, they use AirDrop to AirDrop movies or AirDrop games to each other, which is, just goes around the firewall. Um, several instances of cyberbullying. Um, one happened a couple years ago, had to meet with administration, students, and parents uh, to kind of figure out the issue. And the hard part of that is tracking it and keeping up to date with it because um, most cyberbullying happens outside of school and something that you don't see and you can't um, see it all the time. And then in instances of cyberbullying, I think Snapchat is evil. Um, it's not that hard for a student to snap something and send it to another student and have it disappear. Um, and there goes your evidence that cyberbullying existed. And so I think there are challenges with technology, um, but I think uh, for the most part, the pros outweigh the cons. Um, and with each, I think it's just educating people on uh, its proper use and how we can best use that for the most amount of people. All right. Thank you.